Now we're actually back on the C63 this week. It was going to be the Golf GTI, but I've had obviously problems with the turbo. So I have now sent that back off and I'm waiting for the new core to come back. So luckily the parts are in for the C63. So we're going to do that in today's video, guys. Uh, it feels like it's been forever since I last did a video. I've been literally driving all week. And as some of you know, if you follow me on Instagram, saving underscore salvage, um, I broke down on Wednesday in the transporter and spent 11 hours sat there doing absolutely nothing, waiting for a recovery and ended up having to recover myself. So just wasted a lot of time this week, but I'm hopefully, I mean, it's Friday today. Hopefully this video can get out to you for the weekend. Here she is. And because it's got a new battery on it, I'm hoping it's going to start. However, we're not off to a great start because not unless the key and the battery's flat. So let's give it the old. Battery's got a brand new battery on it. It can't be flat. Christ's sake. Uh, let's try again. Ah, oh, for crying out loud. So while we're waiting for the uh, battery to charge up, I'll just talk you through exactly what I've bought and what we're gonna be doing today. As you can see, we've got our 10 liters of gearbox oil. I've been told the filling quantity of these is a massive nine liters. So that's pretty much all that used. Um, we've got a voltage regulator here. And I believe this is bolts on the side of the alternator. Um, I'm not too sure. I've never actually changed a regulator myself. Um, but I'm sure we'll work out how that goes, but hopefully that will solve our voltage problems. And then we've just got our service parts for the gearbox all changed. So we've got a ceiling ring, a big filter. So I'm guessing we've got to take the pan off, which is why we need this. And then this filter element sits in the sump of the gearbox. Uh, and then we've got, I don't know what that is, some sort of bolt, uh, O-rings. I know, I, I've no idea what the rest of this stuff is. Probably just sumps, bolts as well. Look, I just asked for a service kit for the gearbox. So that is what we have got. Right, it's still charging at a lot of amps, but it's been on charge for a couple of hours now. So fingers crossed, she'll start. There we go. I think I know why the battery went flat. I uh, left my Cardi plugged into it and it obviously drained the battery. Uh, yeah, just drove her into the workshop and yeah, she drove absolutely fine. Didn't have any warning lights on um, and the gearbox was actually absolutely fine. So yeah, I think the new batteries helped, but for the, the sake of the, the voltage regulator, which was 60 quid, I'm just gonna change it and then just hope that's all my problems fixed. So yeah, let's get it on the ramp and I don't know what I want to tackle first. Probably gonna go for the, uh, the voltage regulator because I don't know how easy it's gonna be. So I feel like it's gonna be the hardest job. So I'm gonna tackle that first. Right, so looking under here, I found the alternator. It is there, if you can see it, it's there. Uh, access wise, it doesn't actually, well, I don't know yet. I mean, there is access there. There's a bit of a gap. I've got my steering arm in the way there, uh, anti-roll bar in the way. Uh, it looks like, judge, get a torch in there. See that black plastic cover, that's held on by what, four screws? It looks like I've got to take that cover off and the voltage regulator sits behind that. Uh, it's just whether I can actually do it in situ. I'm gonna really try my hardest to try and get something in there. I need to get an arm in that one of those gaps somewhere to try and undo that cover and Mm, I don't know because otherwise it's uh, alternator out job which I actually haven't looked how hard that will be to get out yet but if I can't fit my arm in that gap then I definitely ain't gonna fit an alternator out of it so it's got to be more involved unless you can get it out from the top I'm not too sure I'll do a little bit more investigating it and uh, yeah we'll see where to go first thing I am gonna do is just clean some of this oil off the underside because it looks very messy. Right, I don't know if there's like a mini subframe or something, but that's coming down as well. I think I 
I've managed to hook the steering rack out of the way enough to quite possibly get my hand in. Might be all, well, I don't want to say anything just yet, but I've got a lot of room. Should have probably disconnected the battery, shouldn't I? I probably should do that. So I've just uh, removed the subframe plate which is down on the floor there which has nicely dropped the steering rack like I hoped it would and that has actually given me look quite a big window to get my arm in there and as you can see look there's the back of the alternator so I think it's literally three four or five screws hopefully I'm just taking that cover off the back of the alternator and that will expose our voltage regulator which again is hopefully only uh, three or four bolts to replace and comes off nice and easily so yeah. Right, obviously I'll show you as much as I can, but with such limited space, it is gonna be hard to kind of show what I'm doing. But at the minute, I'm just gonna try to disconnect the battery. I'm gonna try and disconnect the main feed into the back of the alternator. So I've got that black plastic cover off and that reveals, as you can see, the back of the alternator and you can see the voltage regulator in black. There look just bolted on. Unfortunately though, that first bolt that I've just tried to get out is not budging at all. And there's another one, two, three on there as well. So there's four in total. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is gonna be fun trying to get those out. Here's my new one. Look, it obviously looks the same. So as you can see, there's one, two, three, four bolts. I'm gonna try and get them out now, but yeah, I'm not hopeful. Right, I managed in the end, look, to, if you can see there, look, get it out. Uh, all four bolts were completely solid, could not move them. So, yeah, contemplating the fact that I might have to take the alternator out to end up getting those four bolts out with all this faff was just a no-go for me. So, obviously, having a look at the new one, it is literally just bolted on in four places. It's not any more intertwined than that other than the two prongs here. Uh, so, in the end... I took uh, a trusty hammer and a pry bar and basically chiseled the, uh, <clears throat> the plastic off which exposed the bolts like that and then I, was ma I, managed, uh, to get, then I managed to get the mole grips hooked onto the bolts and turn them a little bit, get them all started so I can unscrew them but yeah I kind of had to butcher that to get it off but much rather that than taking the alternator out. So luckily we have four new screws uh, with the um, kit, so it's obviously a, a common problem. So yeah, shouldn't have a problem putting it back in. And all now refitted, new part on, and I've just put the, uh, if you can see in there, I've just put the cage back on, so look, you can see the new part top right. So all I've got to do now is obviously connect my uh, sensor plug and the big power cable and do it all back up, and that has saved me a job of taking the ornator out. So, yeah, smashing that to bits actually uh, worked out. Well, that's that little subframe bit all in position now. The bolts actually weren't too bad to get back in in the end once I found like the angle to get in there and do them up. So it weren't all too bad. Uh, everything alternator wise is now back together. So we're now gonna move on to the gearbox. So I'll just quickly show you, this is our oil filter. I've just got it out of the box and that obviously sits in the pan, sump pan. And just looking at it here, we have our bolts around the outside. I think there's like a little metal bracket here because there's like a bracket here and it looks like that fit the fill bungs behind it. Um, I think the bracket goes around here, bolt all that wiring looms bolted to it. So I think we need to remove that or drop it down so we can get access to the bolts. Um, obviously we need to drain the fluid first. I'm going to drain it into a couple of um, five litre barrels or well, uh, jugs just so we can see how much oil comes out and, and what the quality of that oil is. And um, once we've obviously drained that, we'll then take the pan off, change the oil filter over, and yeah, put it all back together. So hopefully it's gonna be plain sailing. Well, right, first thing we're gonna do is drain the oil, uh, T40 for the sump bung on this. Definitely black. So after doing a little bit of research now, <laughs> I should have probably done this to start with, but there we go. Um, right, the reason only 200 mil came out is because there is a sleeve inside here. So there is no fill bung. The fill bung and the drain bung are the same thing. And so because of that, there is a sleeve that sits uh, inside the sump pan. And basically, uh, when you pump the oil in, oh, let me see here. When you pump the oil in, it comes out 
and this sleeve is pretty much like this in the inside of the gearbox and the oil will obviously go around it and then once you take the drain bung out the oil cannot come back out because obviously we've got the the level up here so that is why it's like that so now to drain the rest of the fluid i've just got to apparently get a screwdriver and just knock the drain uh, the sleeve out so it falls over can drain the rest of the fluid out then we can take our sump pan off change the filter uh, put the sleeve back in the right position refit everything and then luckily i do have an adapter because i didn't know i'd need one uh, and then we'll screw this into the bottom here pump the fluid in and uh yeah so should be all right so let's do that now right so that sleeve i don't think you knock it fully out it looks like what it feels like with the screwdriver is you can just like tilt it to the left and obviously that lets the fluid run under it and drain out now i still haven't had much come out probably What's that, a litre and a half? I oh, know you can't see it from there. I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to guess about a litre and a half only came out. Um, so I'm very carefully just undoing the sump pan at the minute because I can't see any more up there. So I, I don't know if there's any oil left in there. I mean, I can't really tell if it sounds like there's fluid in there either. So I'm just carefully undoing the bolts and uh, yeah, hoping that there's no oil just going to absolutely cover me. Alright, this should be the last one. Well, I think we might be alright with oil spillages. Not attached anywhere, am I? I think so. I want to drop it. I don't know how much oil is left in here. I've got things in the way. That's it. My jack's not very good because it won't have to put so much pressure in it. There we go. Oh no, there is still quite, no, there's still quite a lot in there. <laughs> Why is it not drained? I don't know why it hasn't drained. Right, looking at the new oil filter, it doesn't look like anything holding it on. So, I don't know if it just slots off. There we go. Right, so here's the old oil filter, and you can just about see the paper element, although it's not really clear on camera, but it is pretty, pretty mucky, so I'm not too sure when the last time that was changed. I mean, luckily this car's not that mega mileage. Um, I, I hopefully it's been done at least once, but I, I don't really know. Um, so looking at the oil, right, so looking at the oil that came out, as you can see there, this is a five litre bottle, so what's it, just over half full probably, so there's probably, between two and a half and three liters there. So um, I am down on oil. Now reading up on the oil change procedure on this car, there are two different types of procedures depending on whether you have a facelift C63 or a pre-facelift. In my case, I have a pre-facelift C63, which means I have a torque converter. The later ones, I think it's from 11 plate onwards. They have an MCT gearbox, which is a wet clutch. And uh, although they hold the same quantity of oil, you cannot drain the oil from the torque converter because it doesn't have one. So with this, I do have a, a torque converter, so you need to also drain that too. Now the torque converter is obviously in the bell housing between the engine and the gearbox. Uh, where is it? And there's a little rubber bung here. And once you remove that, you can see the torque converter in the bell housing. And what you need to do is there's a tiny little four mil Allen key uh, I've just exposed mine. There it is, look. There it is, look. You need to undo that to drain the torque converter. I've already done it and done it back up. As you can see, look, it's still a little bit wet. So I've already drained and I got just under three liters out of the torque converter, but there's only one bolt. So what you have to do is, you might not see it straight away. You'll actually have to turn the engine over by hand. As you can see, look, I've had to get a pair of step ladders and turn it over by hand until that bolt lines up with your little hole here and then you can drain it. So in total, I've got about six liters out the, end, uh, the gearbox uh, oil wire, so it's not too bad. 
So there's that sleeve I was talking about that uh, determines the correct oil level. And as you can see, I've, I've tilted it to the left. Uh, and yeah, some oil came out, but not really, which is why there's still a load left in the pan. But I hadn't done one before, and I was unsure how fragile this tube was, and I didn't want to break it. And I, I was putting a little bit of force in, and it just didn't, it wasn't coming off. I wasn't sure how easy it was supposed to come off. And ultimately, I just didn't want to break it. So that's what I did, what I did. Uh, but it looks like it's a little bit more flexible than uh, what I thought it may be. So maybe with a screwdriver, a bit better, you can just bang it off. There we go, look. So there you go, that's now reset in its position. And when I uh, put my um, fill tube in the bottom of the pan here, it obviously the oil will come out the top here and it will just fill up and the correct level will be when it's in line with that and any excess, it will just come out the tube and drain out. Uh, and when it's stopped dripping, the oil level will be right up the top here and then that will be correct. All right, time to put our new oil filter on. There's no ring on it here, yeah, there's no ring on it. That should just pop up and just sit just like that now I'm now suspecting that they've kind of given me the wrong kit uh, because they've actually given me a new plastic um, refill bung here I'm not going to show you because it's attached and I don't want to mess it around but it's actually this is actually shorter than the one that I've already got installed by about six mil um, so I'm definitely not going to fit that because this one must be correct. I don't want to be fitting that because effectively if six mil shorter, which means there'll be less fluid in the gearbox. So I'm going to suspect this is wrong uh, because they've also given me that weird bolt as well, which I have no idea where that would go on this either. Uh, so at the minute, I think they've probably given me a gearbox kit for possibly the wrong car. Um, but luckily the pan, the sump pan and the oil filter are correct, so that's fine. Um, but I am going to reuse the old sleeve. There we go, all bolted up. Right, so I've now talked all the bolts up for the sumps, that's all good, put the wiring back here, and I've just attached the uh, the tool to refill it, which is in position, and I've used like a little bit of makeshift hose here, and I've got my, um, I've put a litre of, well, just under a litre of gearbox oil in, here, and I've got my little pump, and I'm gonna pump it in, I'm gonna have to do it five times, um, so yeah, so I literally just got to pump it all in and I basically I just keep doing this until all five litres are in and then what we've got to do is we've got to start it up, operate the gearbox, so a bit similar to Audi, put it through drive, reverse, park and then let the gearbox operate up to temperature, I think around 40 degrees, 40, 45 degrees and then what we do is we'll remove the bung, see if any fluid comes out if no fluid comes out, we'll have to add some and basically add some until it's at the top and fluid starts coming out. I've just lowered the car back on the ground. Uh, I've left my tool connected. So now what we've got to do is I've reconnected the battery and I'm going to start it up. I've got it on charge as well. I'm going to start it up. All right. Now I'm just going to go through the gears. So it's now just pumping the fluid around the gearbox. And now I'm gonna leave it idling, get the gearbox up to temperature. Right, sorry if it's difficult to hear me, the engine is running and it's very hot with these exhausts in. So it's up to temperature. And now I'm just gonna remove. No, nothing came out, so I'm gonna pump another litre in. Right, I've just finished pumping another sort of 500 mil in. Just to stop dripping, so now I can uh, put my bung in. And that is the gearbox all at the correct level now.
Right, let's see if it works. We're going backwards to start. Parking sensors work. And by the way, when I left it idling for like 15, 20 minutes, nothing cut out, so I'm hoping that means the alternator issue is also solved. We're just gonna go for a quick drive up the, uh, the drive here, just to make sure it, it works. Um, before I go for a road test, I do still wanna sort the tires out. So that'll be in the next video, the road test. Because in the next video, if, if, if everything's okay, we'll go for a road test, get all the tyres done, we'll MOT it as well, because I think we need a dipped beam on the left as well. So let's just, I'm just gonna go up here. know in the next video guys when I go for a road test so that's it for today's video hope you enjoyed the more in-depth uh, obviously gearbox service and the voltage regulator repair uh, if you did like the video please do like please do comment what do you think do you like the in-depth part of it or would you rather me do it a bit more quicker and have more content so as always guys thank you very much for watching I uh, hope you did enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one cheers guys